Friends, we are going to use Tinkercad and the Bad Moo Labs P1S printer to make one of these in about five minutes. So let's get cracking. All right, so let's start with why this is possible. I save everything. So this is my little junk magnetic drawer. I, of course, took the caliper, measured this at eight millimeters. Of course, I can be flexible on that. I also found out this is three millimeters, and I found several three millimeter screws and a nut. Let me show you how this all comes together. All right, friends, here we go. This is Tinkercad.com. I recommend you sign in with Google, and then today we're going to create a 3D design. Right here is where you name files, and we're going to call this handle. I'm also going to add the word laser because it is fixing one of my lasers. If you're looking at your world, you can right click drag with your mouse to change how it looks. You can also use this sweet view cube. This one takes you home. This is fit view. Zoom in, zoom out, and this is how you change your views. If you look over here, you've got basic shapes to build with. You may recognize that this right here is the shape of that handle. If we click on the corners, you can tell it is 20 millimeters. Remember, I measured mine and it was eight millimeters. I'm actually gonna make it a little larger. I'm gonna make it nine. Watch this trick. If we shift stretch, so I'm holding shift and dragging one of those corners, and then I type the measurement I want, nine millimeters. It snaps to nine millimeters in every direction. It's that easy. If I click on it and choose fit view, it will zoom in so we can look at it much more closely. As you can tell, it is not very rounded. To make it more round, you can switch the sides to 64. You can also add a bevel. I'm gonna put two right here, but then I'm gonna take the segments and I'm gonna change it to five so that it's a little less steep. Now you'll notice it's a little blocky. It also doesn't really matter because we're gonna cut in grooves to make this easier to grip. To cut, we use holes. This is simply another shape I'll hit F to fit view so you can see that. Notice it's still the cylinder, but now it has a hole selected. I'm going to bump the sides up to 64. Once again, that's the max. And right now we're going to make this fit where that screw head is. If we shrink squeeze to any number, I measured that and it was 5 millimeters. So I'm going to type 5.2. So there's a little bit of a gap. For the thickness, I am just going to make this 2.5 so that way it sinks in a little bit. This time we're going to use the Control D command to make a duplicate. I'm going to use the arrows to move that across. That screw was three millimeters in diameter. So I am going to shift stretch this to crazyville and I'm going to type 3.1 so that it's 3.1 in every direction, but then I'm going to make it long enough so it pokes out. To align those three shapes, we are going to select them all. So I just drag and grab them Press the letter L for a line, which is also this button right here. I'm going to make this one the master, and we want to put it in the center of these three dots. And then I always like to look at it from a corner so you can see what I'm talking about more. I'll zoom out a little bit. Once again, since this one is the master, that is the center of that area. If we look at this from underneath, you can see we've got the large hole. And we've got the small hole. If we select them all and do Control G, it groups them. If we press F to fit view, you get a good look at our part. If we press T for transparent, you can see through it. How cool is that? I'm going to quickly press T for transparent again. And now I want to cut in my grooves. We're going to do that with this wedge. When we bring it out, it is not oriented the way we want, but I'm going to just set it down and I'm gonna use this tool to flip it. Notice if I stay in the center, it goes 22 and a half degrees at a time. If I go outside that circle, it goes one degree at a time. If you hold the shift key while rotating, it goes 45 degrees at a time. Very easily, we get it where we want, but notice it's below zero. If we hit D to drop, it brings it up to the level we want. Now I wanna make these grooves really small, so I'm going to shift shrink until it says about size one. I'm going to do F to fit view. And after clicking F, I can zoom out a little bit and just stretch it taller and make it a hole. Once again, drag to select both pieces. L for a line. Make this one the boss. And I want it centered and I want it right to that edge. I do not want my groove to go in quite that far. So I'm going to quickly 
change the nudge to 0.25 and I'm going to back it out one click and now I want this same part on the other side. Control D, shift nudge to move it across. We're going to bust out a sweet tool called mirror and bingo it's pointing the other way. Now I can select just these two shapes. Notice it says two shapes right here. L for a line. Once again, the handle is the boss, and I want it right to that spot. Of course, we need to do the click to move it away. If we zoom in and look, it is the same amount on both sides. Another cool trick is if you switch to flat view and choose the top, it's very easy to see how those line up. From this flat view, are you ready for this? Shift select. So it says two shapes. This rotation handle is going to be awesome. We're going to do control D and we're just going to rotate it 10 degrees. Notice it says negative 10. Wouldn't have mattered if we went the other way. Now if you let go and do not touch anything else and then do control D, it'll rotate all the way around your shape to make those awesome grooves. Bingo. We're going to have the sweet cut in edges. All we've got to do is grab it all and then do control G to group. I'm going to switch back to perspective view and you can see how awesome that turned out. The final step is to make it so it'll lock. We're going to do that by adding room for the hex nut. I am going to cruise this on top of it. So notice the arrow is landing right on that flat shape. Now our large polygon is in place. We could have chosen different sides, but we do know that we want six. And then we also need to shrink this down to the right size. I measured my hex screw and it was 5.5. So I'm going to shift shrink and I'm going to type the number 5.5 and see if that works. Once again, let's align it. L for align. And we want it to go middle and middle. Don't forget if you're struggling with that middle, you can look at it from a corner. I'm also going to do F to fit view and now I can easily see that this was the middle of the two items. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to push it in so there's room for that. I'm going to do that by switching the nudge to one and then we could just move it down or you can do control down. So now it'll be able to slide in there two millimeters and lock the whole thing together. The final step is to select them both and do control G to group. We are just a few moments past that five minutes mark. I was hoping for this tutorial. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far and it absolutely make my day if you took a moment to hit that subscribe button. Of course, if you hit the notification button, you'll be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me. HL Mod Tech. Friends, now let's get it ready for 3D printing. Friends, we're going to make a quick modification. I don't want to lose this one because I liked what I built, but I dropped that nut and lost it. So let me show you how we can adjust this to fit a different nut. So the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup. I'm just going to Alt Shift grow it so it's a little bit larger. So there's my Alt Shift keys being pressed and I'm going to just stretch it out so I'm sure that will fit. Now I also noticed that the nut didn't go in quite as far as I want, so I'm going to ungroup that. And then so I can see what I'm doing, I'm going to hide these pieces. It's that easy to get things out of your way. I'm going to get the right angle so I only hide those. And now let's ungroup this part so we can make an adjustment. I've got T for transparency so we can see through that. I'm actually going to hide it, and I'm going to click on this one and where I did 5.2. I'm going to stretch it just a little bit more. Once again, point one is on and I'm going to alt shift stretch. So it goes about the middle and I'm going to type 5.4 and press enter. If we do show all, everything will come back. And because of how we've got it built now, I can hide this and I'm going to group it all at once. Select them. Notice we've got 40 shapes. Control G to group. And there is our part. If we shut off transparency, it even turns out a little bit cooler. I'm going to do show all so you can see the other ones. I'm going to make the better one blue just to help differentiate them. I'm also going to click on this, do the letter N for note, and I'm going to label this one as V2. Of course, I do need to export it, so I'm going to select only the one, choose export, and I'm going to export it as a STL. This time, though, I'm going to change the name to V2 
and delete the little extra numbers because it already noticed I had made one before. Now, of course, you can find your printer's slicing software. I use Bamboo Studio. I'm going to create a brand new project. We can simply click plus. Of course, it looks where we last saved, which is my 3D modeling folder. All right, one of the things I love about Bamboo Studio is how you can just open it up, pick your settings, and print. Because of the areas under this that are hollow, though, we are going to change a setting quickly. Let's go to support, and let's quickly hit enable support. I'm going to click over here on slice plate. And if we look underneath, you can see the little support layers that were added. And let's print plate. It's that easy. I do want to make sure I have the right filament instead of A3. I am going to print it with my blue, and let's send it to the 3D printer. It arrives that quickly. Of course, we can hit play. And after it has downloaded, we can remotely monitor the 3D print. As you can see, it's going to take about 10 minutes. And about 10 minutes later, we have got a tiny part ready for testing. Friends, here we are with V1 and V2. You'll notice those supports are right there. Notice I am just pushing through to pop it out. Of course, now we'll quickly unthread that. And let's flip it around and put it on the correct way. Of course, speeding it up with some video editing skills. Next step, add the hex nut. And I can do a little bit of final tightening with an Allen wrench. Bingo, handle created. Friends, as I wrap this up, I do want to remind you about my website, ahlmodtech.com. Of course, I have got a page dedicated to Tinkercad with tons of amazing categories. Below that, you'll find the day one favorites, the useful starters, and the Tinkercad essentials. Of course, if you look directly below that, you will find my course, Tinkercad in 20 Days, which is hosted on cadclass.org. Of course, this video explains all about it, and I do want to highlight, if you look at the very bottom, there is a coupon code, 25HL Tinkercad. That'll get you 25% off any of the awesome courses you find on the website. You can get to the website instantly by clicking right here. I want to quickly highlight the sweet built-in message until you can click that button, add your question, comment, or suggestion, and reach me almost instantly. Another bonus is if you look at the very top, you will find the link to the Tinkercad Community Discord. As you can see, there are a boatload of members, and it's a fantastic place to talk everything Tinkercad. Finally, friends, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Please also hit that share button so more people can learn about HL Mod Tech. Don't forget you absolutely make my day if you take time to leave a comment down below. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.